Hello everyone, Boone here. Welcome back to Boone Builds. I am building the Lego Creator 3-in-1 Medieval Castle. This is set number 31120. I started very early this morning. I got through bag 5 or maybe 2 the beginning of bag 5. Yeah, I think I still have 5, 6, 7 left. Here's the box. Let me uh, go ahead and feature the box for just a moment. If you weren't with us this morning, we are having fun. There is the front of the box. There is the back of the box, and I can't lean into my mic and show you this at the same time. But uh, it's awesome, 1,500 pieces. This is going to be available from LEGO on the, the 1st of June. This set was sent to me by the AFOL engagement team so that I could share it with you, share the build with you here today. So thank you very much to the folks, the kind folks over there at Affilet. Super duper awesome. We have Brickman Mosaics art is here. Snowlena was chatting with us. Ava Marie, the Supreme Lego Empire. Thank you all for watching. Melissa is here. She says, hi, Boontastic. Mr. Boontastic. All right. Thank you very much for coming, Melissa. I'm going to dive into bag five. Let's take a dive into bag five. And uh, go invite your friends if you are watching alone send your friend a text message and say hey i'm watching boone build this sweet castle uh why don't you head on over here and watch with me can't hurt couldn't hurt right brick brickham's den is here yo 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 brickham's den with a yo 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 brick jedi lego matic everybody is coming to the party today listen uh i've got some exciting news and i've said it before I've got some exciting news less than a week away from rebooting my weekly evening live stream. It has a new name. It is going to have the spirit of a full spotlight live, my old weekly live stream from last last year, but it is going to be that and so much more. And um, I just put some final, some final touches on the new logo today. I'm gonna keep that a secret for another few days. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. I might release that or Sunday or Monday. And um, uh, it's gonna be so much fun. I've got, I've got ideas for new segments. I'm, I'm very excited. I hope I'm not overhyping it because um, I'm very excited about it. And y'all are probably gonna be like, this is pretty much the same as the old show. But I hope not. I hope that it's like, whoa, Boone's doing some really cool stuff. So that's coming next Thursday. Next Thursday evening. Here are some really cool window elements that we have in bag five. I believe this is the first time I've, well, I can't remember. Did these, did any of these come in Diagon Alley that came out last year? I can't remember if they came in Diagon Alley. If they didn't, then this is probably the first time I'm using this particular piece. Um, so anyway, um, Lego Maddox says, what about Brick End Weekend? Maybe it's the Brickin' Weekend. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's going to come back or not. You know, I started that show shortly after... Um, I started Brick End Update shortly after... What's the... Uh, after I was accepted into the LEGO Ambassador Network. And my thought was that I would use that as a platform every weekend to just kind of like give an update on like news in the LEGO world. But then it sort of occurred to me over time that there's not always news from the Lego world that I consider like particularly compelling. Um, so I just didn't always feel like I needed to do it and I felt like brick and update, um, it served a purpose for a little while. I may do it again in the future or it might become a segment of, um, might become a segment of the new show or maybe it'll just be a uh, maybe I'll just go back to doing a quick update, a quick live stream on a Saturday or a Sunday like I was doing last year. We'll see. I don't know. I haven't I haven't done brick and update since December, I believe. Taco builds Lego with that white Boba Fett minifigure in the avatar. That's pretty sweet. Noah is here. Hey Boone, what's up? Brickham's Den said they came in white. I believe in Andrea's house from the Friends line. Okay, those curvy windows. It's a pretty cool piece. I'm excited about it. It is a curved piece, but it accepts the same flat window element, you know, uh, window pane element that goes in the flat ones. So I'm really excited about it. Lego Matic, enjoy your dinner. Lego Matic says, bye, gotta go, dinner. Made a little rooster. So 
Somebody earlier, I can't remember who was talking earlier about um, the thing they don't like about creator sets is that the animals are like brick built. But I, I and I and I see your point in that when the animals are brick built, it means we don't get like cool new animal minifigures. But um, I just I think that's pretty clever. Look at that little rooster. Come on, you can't you can't be mad at this rooster. You can't be mad at this rooster. I think I can do a rooster sound. You ready for Boone's best shot at a rooster impersonation? <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Noah says, sorry, I'm new to your live streams. I just started watching your live streams. I've been watching Corey's live stream. Awesome. Welcome, Noah. You don't have anything to apologize as far as I'm concerned. Um... No, I, what are you apologizing for? You just said, hey, Boone, what's up? That's cool. It's half of the Bearded Builders. What's your favorite comp uh, What's your favorite competitor's build on LEGO Masters? LEGO Creator says, what's your favorite L LEGO competitor's build on LEGO Masters? Um, my favorite competitor's build, I have a few. I think at the very top was Melon Germain's Pharaoh Sands Amusement Park from Episode 1. We felt like it was very underrated in the final edit of the of the show. And the reason that I felt like it really stood apart is because we all started with green base plates. Obviously, there was some, if you remember the episode, there were like some trees. And maybe somebody had like water in their area, like blue instead of green base plates. Um, and then we had monorail that we had to work around. Monorail track was like already on the board and those connected up to go all the way around. But um, so pretty everyone pretty much just kind of like started on the green as if it were grass and worked from there. But Mel and Jermaine, they were like, nope, we're going to do a desert. And they covered the entire area. And it was probably, it's hard for me to imagine, 48, I'm thinking like a 48 by 48. It's probably like four 48s. So it's... I bet those tables were close to 150 studs by 150 studs. And they, so what is that? That's like 10,000, I don't know, 10,000, uh, 10, uh, 12, 12,500. Is that 12,500 studs? I don't know. I can't do that math, but, um, but, uh, they covered that entire area with, with tan to make it sand before starting their, their build. And I thought that was just really awesome. Okay, so here's a little chicken. Little chicken and a little rooster. <laughs> the music stopped so that I could crow like a rooster. All right. Josh Josh Van Bell says, What up from Kalamazoo, Boone? Hey, I've never met anyone who was actually from Kalamazoo. What up? Hope you're doing well. Noah says, How many mocks have you... Uh, wait, how many mocks have you been making during your live streams and what's your favorite mock? I don't build mocks during live streams because it's just too, you know, with the new setup, if I can find, if I can figure out a good way to manage my cables from my headphones, because I'm, I'm about to get one of those boom mics that goes from the headphone to the, the mouth. And if I can figure out a way to manage my cable, like maybe with like a bungee cord from the ceiling or something like that, in a way that I can have a long enough cable to build here, talk to y'all, then walk to my shelves to get parts, but but continue to be engaged in the live stream. If I can crack that nut, then I will try to start building mocks on stream. But the reason I don't is because my parts are just all over this place. Um, so I just haven't ever imagined a great way to access my parts while trying to live stream. Lego all around. Um, what if season two of Lego Masters had Marvel challenge where they would have to represent the movie given to them? That would be so cool. You know, um, I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but it certainly would be cool. And I think it's, it could make sense. They did a Star Wars challenge in season one. And, um, you know, Star Wars has become a major Disney property. Marvel has also become a major Disney property. Um, Leah, Leah said, didn't we go to Kalamazoo? I remember, 
wanting to order Kalama stew or something like that. No, it was it was just Kalama. And we thought it was pronounced Kalama, Kalama, but it's just Kalama. And we would drive through Kalama and we would say, like, want to go to the Kalama Zoo? Want to eat some Kalama stew? Um, hold on, I have to tie my Kalama shoe. Yeah, no, sorry, uh, sorry, Leah. It was, um, it was, uh, it was just, it was just Kalama. I've never been to Kalamazoo. CCJT Studio says, hey, Boone, just joined. Snow Lena says, Lego Masters Australia Season 3 just had a Marvel Challenge. Okay, well, there you go. Um, you know, we didn't repeat any of the Season 1 IP stuff from Australia. We did um, have some similar challenges to Australia. Even... Even people who say that we had challenges that were exactly the same don't believe them because they weren't. They were just very similar or inspired by. Um, and, and something that I just learned, I actually just learned this, that, you know, um, they, all of the Lego Masters, like all of the Lego Masters productions since season one of Australia have been produced by the same global production company. It's called End of All Shine. So Australia was produced by Endemol Shine Australia. Fox was produced by Endemol Shine uh Endemol Shine North America. And um they they're all in the same it's the same production company. So they actually can share ideas about what projects they're going to do and um what what challenges they're going to do. So Studs Manor says my sister lives in Kalamazoo. Cool, I think. Unless Kalamazoo is really lame, but um, somebody here, Lego, was it, who said they were from Kalamazoo? Bum, ba, bum, 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 Someone said Kalamazoo. Well, I can't find it. But, uh, I hope, I hope you enjoy living in Kalamazoo. And I hope you enjoy it when your sister, I don't know, if your sister visits or whatever, or if you visit your sister. Brickman says, all around, I actually gave that idea to Brickmaster Amy. She loved the idea, and she said she might add that as the last episode, same as the Star Wars episode. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I imagine that they've, you know, he. so I just also learned the other day that that there are lists of hundreds of challenge ideas that they don't end up doing. They start with hundreds of ideas. So I would imagine that like, um, I don't know, I would just, I, I would sort of imagine that, you know, those IPs that they may be able to get access to, like, of course, Star Wars happened. And um, what's the other one? Uh, you, we were just talking about Marvel. Those are probably on lists somewhere, and they're just kind of figuring out which ones they can do. Bretsky is back, and Brett Hoopa. Bretsky and Hoopa are here. Two Bretts. Two incredible Bretts. Incredible Bretts. Two incredible Bretts. Fishyland. Hello, Fishyland. How the heck are you? Well, um, today, let me think of, let me tell you about some of the things I did between building the first piece of this and um, coming back to stream some more this afternoon. I went and bought a bunch of El Pastor and a bunch of carnitas. No, not carnitas. Uh, carne asada. And it's going to be awesome. And um, we're going to cook that at my buddy Jason's tonight. What else? What else did I do? Oh, I went to a yard sale and I bought a $15 um, side box smoker. So that's going to be cool. I'm going to try to take a take a hand at like smoking some uh maybe I'll try to figure out how to smoke tri-tips this summer. Mm, don't you want to come? No, you can't. It's it, it's too expensive. I'm just going to buy enough for my family. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I can get that smoker going and um it is the it's got a pretty solid bottom. I paid $15 for it. I couldn't believe it. I would not have been surprised if she had said, you know, I asked the lady uh, her she said her husband had just rolled it out from the back sounded like they were getting ready to move so they were having a sale so that they could like you know have less stuff to try to get rid of try to clean out before they moved and I said what do you want for that smoker and she said how, how about 15 bucks and I said yes are you sure um, 
and uh, she said, she said, yeah, she's like, um, we just, we just got to get it out of here. So if you would love to use it for $15, she's like, I would love for you to have it. And I was like, absolutely. Uh, I have to go get my car and come back. So I wheeled the thing around to the side of the yard so that it didn't look like it was still for sale. Um, it is a little bit rusted on the inside, which is very typical of those things. It's what you always have to look for. Uh, and, but, but I, I kind of banged on the bottom and kind of felt all around and it is not rusted through. So I figured for $15, if I get even a couple of years out of it, that'll be, that'll be worth it. And it'll, it'll be like, um, you know, $15 is a very small gamble on whether or not I'm going to enjoy the process of smoking meat, you know? So we'll give it a try. See. Aaron says, speaking of tri-tip, have you ever, uh, you ever try the Costco marinated tri-tip? So good. Listen, Aaron, I grew up on that stuff. That's why I said tri-tip. Um, my, my dad, my dad grilled tri-tip when I was young and he always went to Costco and he got the, the Yoshida's, uh, the, the Costco Yoshida sauce. By the way, I met Mr. Yoshida. His, his name is, um, I don't remember his first name, but he's the guy, the, uh, an Asian gentleman with a cowboy hat on the cover, like on the label of the Yoshida bottle. And he lives like three miles from me and he's got a restaurant like another three miles from me and I met him at a place that's right over here between me and Brett's house, his daughter. So Mr. Yoshida's daughter owns the nearest shopping center to our house. And when one of the big things closed, they had a big sale in there, like a big yard sale, but it was indoors. And Mr. Yoshida was selling like a bunch of stuff, kind of like from his estate, things he had collected over the years, a lot of like big, uh, restaurant, you know, big restaurant implements, furniture from all over the place. He owns a lot of, you know, they own a lot of properties and he's, he's really in, into the restaurateur businesses, you know? And, um, so I got to meet him cause he was over there selling stuff and I asked him if I could take a picture with him and he obliged. So I have a picture with me and Mr. Yoshida. Yeah. So I definitely, uh, my dad was all about the, the Yoshida, marinated Costco uh, tri-tip. It was like one of my favorite things growing up. So that's kind of why I got this. My dad didn't smoke. He just grilled tri-tip. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can learn how to smoke it. I might ask for one of those, um, one of those remote like temperature gauges for my birthday. You know, with the app, you can connect it to an app and it like tells you how hot the meat is inside and it tells you how hot the inside of the smoker is. I've heard that to really smoke well, you need all that information. Um, so I'm going to try it. Brickham's Den. Oh, Aubrey. Oh, hi. We were just watching part one of this build. Oh, cool. Well, thank you for watching the replay. And now, Aubrey, did you watch to the end of part one? Or did you, like, watch some of part one and then switch over here? Red Brick Redemption says, I'm going to try to process your question here while I'm building. Boone, can you speak about at what point the Lego Masters production process do they film their contestant commentary just as soon as possible all the way through? So sometimes when a, when like part of, you know, when part of a build is over or when there's a break, like when there's a break for most of the production crew, they might be like, all right, this team and this team go into interviews. So it might be like right away um, and they're just always trying to work them in or like at the end of the day when like filming is over before they send everyone home, they probably try to work in a couple of, you know, interviews and the story producers just, um, you know, know all of the important things that happen. There's people back there whose job it is to literally like watch the entire time and know everything that's going on. Right. That's that's their job. And they're always thinking about like, OK, what are the important things to remember? What are the callbacks? And, uh, yeah, anyway, Aubrey says, watch till the end, then saw you were live again. Amazing. Amazing. That's awesome. I don't know. I don't have great data on how many people watch these things in the replay. It sort of seems to me like it's not very many, but, but, uh, so anyway, the point, my point is, Aubrey, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And everybody, um, Aubrey is one of my awesome supporters over on Patreon. 
So I actually just got to meet Aubrey in a patron only. Um, we did we did a stream, but we kind of did a hangout where like everyone who wanted to like got to come into the into the into the screen, and we all kind of talked about some of the things we were building and some of our favorite stuff right now. So thank you very much, Aubrey, for being one of the awesome supporters over at Patreon. And um, that's just a little hint. If uh, if you're watching and you're not on Patreon, some of the cool things that we do uh, just on Patreon. Uh, da 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 da. Oh, is it is it the <laughs> is it the McDonald's theme? Da 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 da. Or is it like um? Da 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 da. I don't know exactly how to sing your name. Or is it? Da 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 da. Oh, it could be that one. Da 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 da. <laughs> uh, da 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 da. Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's da 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 da. Is laughing and crying at the same time. It looks like. So glad we could. Glad we could <laughs> give you that little uh, emotional roller coaster there. Minifigure says my favorite black my favorite are Black Falcon Knights. Are you kidding me? Minifigure collector, your favorite minifigures are or your favorite knights. Your favorite are Black Falcon Knights. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, that's awesome. You there's more Black Falcon Knights now. I don't know if they were I don't know if they were desirable before, like from an inch, like an international standpoint, like were they valuable before? Oh, I put um, I talked about this in the first stream, and I did it after I left. I put I went and got a focus. I went and got a um, a crown, uh, a shiny crown and a shiny sword, and put them on my sig figs. So here we have King Boone. Oh, and now look at this. I just put in the throne. So I can put King Boone on the throne. For the throne. All right. There we go. That's pretty cool. Check that out. So now King Boone has a little throne to sit on. Um, I don't know if that's really a throne. It sort of looks like a sitting chair. It's If it's a throne, it's kind of a weak throne. But, okay. <laughs> but maybe it's just a... Maybe it's... Maybe it's just an humble throne. It's just a, a mere, a mere trifle of a throne. All right, minifigure collector. My favorite minifigures in this set are Black Falcon Knights. You, oh, they're all Black Falcon Knights. Oh, except the person who doesn't have the Black Falcon thing on. Hassani says, "Hey, what's up? Hey, not much." Uh. ERF Dragon Art says King Boon rules. King Boon. All hail King Boon. His Majesty. That's kind of weird. <laughs> it sounds like I'm saying I'm a king. All right. Um, I had a friend who won season two of King of the Nerds. So if you ever watch that show. I know Kayla, season two champ of King of the Nerds, so she's she is a king, um, of something. Uh, let me let me zap back out here a little bit. This is too close, too close. Give us a little bit of breathing room. Chantel, Chantel builds is here. Tommy D. Boone, when will part two of the studio redo be posted? When I do more to my studio, I. That's my answer is always. I will do more. I will do another part of the studio redo when I do more work on my studio because there's not there's not much has changed. I did. I I finally did do these shelves back here. So now those are parts bins from top to bottom. It used to be like a weird mixture of parts bins and storage and like a little bit of display, but now it is completely parts bins. And I intend to do that with those shelves over there too. It's going to just be like top to bottom parts bins. And I just got a really cool idea. I just got a really cool idea for what to do with these tables that are over here. People, I'm thinking about building a Lego city. And I've never been terribly excited about building a Lego city before because um, 
I just I didn't have a good idea to like fuel the Lego city, but I got an idea today and I'm thinking about doing it because uh, uh, I think it could be I think it could be really cool. Oh, I messed something up. So thinking about doing that and I think I have a name in mind for what my city is going to be, but I got to look out there and see if there are any other. I want to make sure that I'm not using a city, a name for my city that some other YouTube channel is already using or like some other builder, you know, if it's another builder, I might just be like, Hey, yo, do you mind if I use the same name for my city? Um, if it's another YouTuber, I'll probably not want to use the same name. So I, I got to double check that before I say anything about it, but I just got this idea. I just got this idea and it's super inspiring. And, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking for the first time, I'm thinking about doing a city in this studio. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be huge, but I think it should be cool. Da 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 da, da says what software do you use to stream? Right now I am using um what is this? Stream yard. Oh, there's a second chicken. I just realized there's supposed to be a second chicken and I only built one. Right now I'm using Stream Yard. In the future, um I'm in the process of getting a bunch of equipment from Roland. If you've heard of Roland Corporation, they're gonna connect me with a bunch of cool live streaming equipment. So I'll be talking about some of that stuff in the near future. All right, I can't tell what the chicken is supposed to look like. I forgot what the chicken's supposed to look like. I think it's this and this. Oh, I guess I have one sitting over there. I only built one chicken, so now I gotta go back and catch up. Chicken, chicken, chicken dinner. All right. <laughs> and I guess these are actually supposed to go on here. It shows adding the chickens like to the ground over here by the archery <laughs> by the archery target. Seems like kind of a risky place for chickens to be hanging out. <laughs> Steven. Steven W. Howard. How you doing, Steven? Glad to see you. Steven says, What's up, Boone? That's a pretty cool set you've got there. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about it. If you've joined if you just joined us, this was the piece that I finished earlier today. This is the whole front of it. And um and now I'm I'm on bag five, working on the side pieces. And we're gonna see this all come together here, and I think I think I should be able to make good enough time. Yeah, I'm about two thirds through the book, so I got almost two thirds of the way done in three hours this morning, and um, I've got about I I could go for another two hours. I could go for another hour and a half, whatever. Um, so I think I think I'll make it. I think I'll finish today. And then we'll be like, oh, sweet, this thing is done. Knocked it out in two live streams. Chicken pot pie, Chantel builds. Aubrey says, are you coming to Brick Slopes this year, Boone? It is there. I, I cannot say 100% whether I'm coming to Brick Slopes, but there is a good chance. Um, how do I say it like this? I haven't been traveling. I haven't done any traveling for a year. So there's a good chance that Brick Slopes could be the first convention that I choose to travel to. Um, but like I said, I'm just not I'm not 100% ready to fully commit to it yet. So I would love to come. I hope uh, do, is that your convention? Do you go to Brick Slopes, Aubrey? It would be great to uh, meet you there if that is the convention that you go to. Um, I certainly have some friends down there. So it would be great uh, to get to go. There are a couple of a couple of Brick Slopes regulars on season two of Lego Masters. Could be cool. Could be very cool. So we'll see. Um, I'll, I will let you know. I, I certainly will announce that if if I get to a point where I feel like I can make the decision to go to Brick Slopes, uh, I will be letting Cody Otley know so he knows ahead of time, and I will announce it here so that folks in that neck of the woods can make sure we get a chance to connect. Um, all right. 
Cool. That looks good. This is uh, this is how this thing's turning out here. Love it. It's a good look. Good looking little building. I find it interesting. Does anybody in the chat know why there were buildings in medieval times where the second story of the building was was wider than the first story of the building. That seemed like kind of a medieval thing. I've seen that a lot. It happens in this. I feel like part of the uh, medieval blacksmith is sort of like that. So let me know if you're in the chat and you understand why that was. Why were medieval buildings larger on the second story? Eric Rodning is here. Um, welcome, Eric. Says, hi, Boone. See you later. Says, hello. Um, it's see you later. It's a little confusing when your name is see you later, but your message is hello. Well, what is it? Is are you here? Have you just arrived or are you leaving? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Brickham's Den says probably for defense. Okay, cool. That uh, certainly seems logical. Look at these nice beams. These are uh, these one by twelves. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, look at that. One by twelves that span across here. That's a nice brick. I bet that would uh, a brown, reddish, reddish brown one by twelve brick. I bet that would fetch a little bit on um, Bricklink. Not that I'm gonna sell it, but I'm just saying. You don't see a lot of one by twelves. Roy says the ground floor was usually for animals, which is why European buildings have a ground floor and then a first floor. Oh, that makes sense. Basically to create more for footage, more square footage in the same footprint. Okay. I'd like to do that with my house. I want to, I want to pop up. I want to create a second story on my house. I live in a one, I live in a one story house. I don't really have a great aspiration to move ever because housing uh, houses are ridiculously expensive so if I wanted to like I could sell my house right now and make about I think I could think I could make about two thousand uh, about two hundred thousand dollars on my house if I sold it right now um, given what I paid for it and what I owe on it I guess what I paid for it is irrelevant just like what I owe on it um, and what value it has what is that appreciated um, since we've lived here but if we wanted so let's say I, let's say i could sell this house for four hundred thousand dollars um i would we would if we wanted a bigger house we would have to buy a house for five hundred thousand dollars and it's like we would immediately say goodbye to the two hundred thousand dollars that um that we've earned in equity and and then we would uh we'd have a higher mortgage so instead, I sort of just plan to stay in this house forever. And if I ever have, uh oh, I did this wrong. If I ever have enough money, I will just build a second story. And the crazy thing is there are two houses in my neighborhood that used to be the same one story footprint as mine. And they've added a second story. So like I have examples right here in my neighborhood of like, houses that used to be just like my house and now they're two-story houses and the contractor that designed them lives right like around the corner from me i don't know him but if i ever really wanted to do it i could probably go pick his brain just because we're neighbors okay sorry aaron says second stories are great if you don't sleep upstairs and you have no bathroom upstairs i have a second story loft what's the problem with sleeping upstairs does it get hot um Brickham's Den says, I'm not in a wealthy neighborhood. We just pay a lot for houses. Yeah, that's that's kind of like here. I have like I have the I have the floor plan that this is like an eleven hundred square foot house. So it's like really it's one of the smallest floor plans for like a three bedroom, two bathroom home. You could probably get three bedrooms into like a, a 900 square foot house, but they would be very small bedrooms and you, you would probably have a very, very limited like extra living space. Um, anyway, I digress. Let's talk about Lego. What editing? Oh, this isn't Lego. 
Captain Chris Briggs says, what editing software do you use? I use Adobe Premiere. I've been an Adobe user since about the year 2000. Since the year 2000. Since the year 2000. Um, so I got on Adobe Premiere, I think when it was Adobe Premiere 5 or 6. Then there was like Adobe Premiere 7. There might have been an 8. And then they switched to Creative Suite. And then some years later, Creative Suite became... Oh, no, 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 no. It became Adobe Premiere Pro after 7. I think after 7, it became Adobe Premiere Pro. And then there was like Adobe Premiere Pro 1 or, you know, 2 or 3 or something like that. And then it became Creative Suite. And then it became Creative Cloud. So, oh, there's like a weather vane at the top of this. I think this is a weather vane. Does that seem like a weather vane? Uh, hold on. It goes on this. Um, and so I have been upgrading. I've been upgrading Adobe Premiere since before it, before Premiere Pro was a thing. Since before Creative Cloud was a thing. Now it's just a subscription service, and I just pay each month. Yeah, look, it's a weather vane, and I get to build a black version of that rooster to put on top of the weather vane. And let's see, how does this go like that? That's pretty cute. That's kind of funny. It's a little bit meta that they would like give you a brick built rooster and then give you like a, a brick built rooster that is not a real rooster. And they're basically the same build. They just are different colors. That's funny to me. Um, not bad, just funny. They are a little bit different. They're a slightly different build. They they made this one sort of look shorter. Like the rooster that goes on top of the weather vane is a little bit smaller than the, the actual rooster. And there it is. Weather vane rooster. What a fun idea. I do not mind that that's brick built. Okay. Uh, DJ Headphones says, how much is the set? Um, I should know that. Lego, I maybe ninety nine dollars, or maybe one twenty nine. Let me look. Lego, three one one two zero, and there it is. It just went live on Lego. Ninety nine bucks, ninety nine dollars. So the same price as the that pirate ship that came out last year. Oh my goodness, the windows, these roundy window things aren't even windows. They are going to become the the water paddle wheel. That's awesome. DJ Headphones 666, absolutely no problem. Anytime. If I have the information, I will give it to you. Um, all right, what am I building here? So I'm starting to build the paddle wheel, I guess. So there's this. Am I going to build more of these? I don't know. I have a feeling that this is going to go like all the way around. I'm going to build these. Let's get all the pieces over here. We're ready for all the pieces to come over here. I'm almost done with bag five. Bag five is close to being done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is cool. So each of these is going to hold like one spoke of the center of the wheel. And it goes like this. And then... Hmm. Then I build more of those and they go on. So this, this. Each of these spokes goes like this. I'll zoom in on this a little bit and then um, y'all can kind of see how this paddle wheel is built. So there's the first spoke on the hub. There's the second spoke. And it'll go on like this. Do, 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 like that. Okay. Blue Bandit says, can you do me a favor? I don't know. What's the favor? Aubrey says, so many great sets coming this summer. Yeah, for real. I feel like... I feel like LEGO has kind of upped their game. I feel like the last couple years have been really good. I feel like whoever is on Creator Expert now... Not Creator Expert, but Creator 3 and one Man, they've been doing some good stuff. I feel the I feel like some of the coolest stuff 
in the last couple of years has come through Creator 3 and 1. Uh, can you say Baba Booey? Well, I just said it when I read it. Uh, is, are you supposed to say that a certain way? Like, Baba Booey! There, that's all you get. <laughs> DJ Headphones, I hope they add more Ghostbusters sets. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I wonder what's up with that. Like, we got the one big Ecto-1 that was supposed to, you know, that was going to be released with the movie. And then the movie got put off from, like, last June to this May, and then now to, like, I think this July. So maybe they're just still hold. maybe they have more Ghostbusters sets and they're just still holding on to them. I think they wanted to get that. Okay, then look at this. So now we take these round window things and we put them on here. Anyway, um... I was gonna say, you know, uh, we were they. I think they wanted to get that big Ecto one out before the Christmas season. I think they were like, nope, we've already waited too long. We gotta put this thing out. It's Christmas time. We'll let, let people buy it. Let them eat cake. So now look at that. Isn't that cool? And then we put this on here, like so, and we can pretend that the water makes it spin and if you were able to see inside let's see can you see the nope you can't see it um let's move down so do you see the little hammer in there i'm gonna try to hold this at an angle so that it uh, so, that, so then when you spin this around do you see the hammer going down <laughs> so i'm spinning the so it's right there there's the hammer on the sword and as i spin the wheel, the hammer goes up and down. Boom. So you can kind of imagine like the... <laughs> the blacksmith is like... Alright. I think that's the end of that. Holy smokes, that's the end of that. That bag. That bag is finished. There's so many extra pieces. Okay, here we go. Look at this, now we get to connect. So this goes on here. Let me pull back a little bit. And this can click right into here. Chink. That's cool. And then it can swivel like that, or it can go like that. Okay. So that's how much of the castle we have so far. So I'll try to gently hold it like this. The one drawback of my, my new setup is that I can't really show you like things from straight on. Hold on, the the crest on the gatehouse was crooked. There we go. Ah, pretty cool, huh? Oh my goodness, it's looking great. Love it. I don't know what that's for. It's kind of strange. Okay, I'm gonna move on. We're gonna open up bag number six. I need to take a little drink. Let me just chat with the. I'll chat with the. Uh, Chat with the live live chat for a moment while I take a break. Red Brick Redemption says, Love Lego Blacksmiths, the Blacksmith House, and the Temple of Air Jitsu is the coolest build I've ever done. Awesome. Sam Purvis, hey Sam, says, Boone, how's it coming? It's coming good, dude. I hope you just saw uh, what I was able to show you of what I've done so far. Fazoom says, back at it, eh? Yeah, I'm back at it, Fazoom. I'm back at it. <laughs> All right. Aubrey says, Brickham's Den, just a small trek. I think she had asked Brickham's Den where he was. Toronto, Canada. Okay. Jake Sadovich is with us, everybody. Jake, the Sadovich. Jake Sadovich is one of the best builders I know, y'all. Um, I'm not kidding. I am a big, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge Jake Sadovich fan. Blue Bandit says, "Hey Boone, what Lego Star Wars set do you have? I should put that in. I, sh I, I think I'm gonna make a FAQ, um, so that when people ask this, the questions that I answer the most often, I can say like, oh, go check out the FAQ. And then the great thing then is, you'll go there to learn the thing that you asked, but you'll also learn about all kinds of other things that people ask all the time." Um, but I did talk about 
my Lego Star Wars sets this morning. The only things I actively collect are Boba Fett stuff. Um, the Slave One ships, the minifigures, and I have the helmet. I have the construction, the buildable figure. Those are the only things I really actively collect. I don't have all of the Boba Fett figures, but I have all of the hardest to find Boba Fett figures. So the ones I don't have, I don't really know which ones they are. They're just sort of like the slight variations of the ones that have come through. I don't necessarily have all of them, but I have, I have, the, I have the big ones. So I don't, I don't usually talk about that because I'm not a huge minifigure collector, but I have, I have at least two Boba Fett figures that are worth like a huge chunk of the whole rest of my collection. Don't tell anybody that. Okay. Sam Purvis says, do you have the Django slave one? I do, but it is not assembled. So that's one that I still have to put together. And I'll tell you this, Sam, Django Slave 1 has a story. I bought the Slave 1 as a graduation, as a high school graduation present for myself. That was when it was on the shelves, brand new. I had the box, I had the figures, I built it. That summer between high school and college, I took it to college with me, put it on display. It was... Uh, on that slave one was pretty much up on display like hanging from the ceiling of my dorm room in college all through college i got married we were in a couple of apartments and i think the the slave one was just like kind of stored away during or it might have been up on a shelf i can't remember and then we moved into this house um i created kind of a display shelf in one of the building one of the rooms over there because at that time this was just a garage uh and then after some years, when we were first owning this house, we just kind of hit it. We hit a season of life where we really needed some cash. And, um, you know, it was probably maybe it was around the time that like Jordy was born or something like that. And so I sold, I sold my Django Slave One. And I regretted it forever. Uh, but not forever, forever. Well, part of me will slightly regret it forever because. I had one that I bought like as a, as a high school graduation present to myself. Um, you know, cause my folks got me a computer <laughs> and, um, I remember like the girlfriend that I had that year bought me like this street light, like a street, like a, like a traffic signal, like a legit traffic signal that she found at like an auction or a yard sale or something like that. It was huge and heavy and it was awesome. And you could, I, I wired it so that you could plug it in to a standard household outlet and it would light up like, you know, but nobody was buying me Lego that year. So I bought myself the Django slave one. Hey, there's a baguette. There's a baguette in this set. Oh, I need to replace this since I'm building again. Um, look, there's the, is that a baguette or is that just like a French roll or something like that? I don't know what it is. Uh, who knows? So then some years later, I decided to go ahead and buy the Slave 1 again, the uh, Django Slave 1. And it is 100% complete with the minifigures, but it does not have the box. So I don't have that cool original box that I had way back when. And I believe that was before, that was when the Lego boxes still had like the slide out. So like the boxes were really rigid still, you know, when, when you uh, open them up. Now Lego boxes are pretty flimsy. Um, I don't really mind that because I don't really save many of my boxes. But Jake says, rad. Sam Purvis says, oh no, that's so unfortunate. It's okay. It's all right. You know, I try not to spend too much time worrying about that stuff. It's okay. You know, it's it, it, we, it was at a time where we, I had a thing that was cool that I had appreciated, but it had also spent some years just like sitting on a shelf and... So then um, we hit a time when we really just like needed some money to, you know, I don't know, pay or, you know, help pay our mortgage or help buy diapers or something like that. And, and it was like, yeah, this is cool, but someone else could really appreciate this. And I was able to get, uh, you know, a pretty decent amount of money for it. And then some years later, I, you know, felt like I had enough money to buy it again. So cool. It's all right. 
yeah, for Zoom, got to do what you got to do. And, you know, that was all on part of my journey. And, and it, here's the thing. The, my, my relationship to stuff in the world has evolved over and over again um, throughout the years. And that's good, right? That's like a, that's like a part of being human is like getting perspective on the things that seem really important at one moment and are just really not important at another moment when compared to other things. And then, and then it's okay to come back and be like, yeah, but of all of those things that I let go of over the years, some of them were important enough to me to like want to experience them again. And, and I say experience because to me, every Lego set is not, I don't consider any Lego set like a collectible. I don't consider a Lego set like a, a, a thing that I own that, um, you know, like I have this and it's mine. I really look at everything in Lego as experiential. If it's a Lego set I own, it's an experience I got to have building it or it reminds me of an experience because I bought it somewhere cool. Um, that's what that's what Lego is all about for me. And Mox, you know, Mox just take that to another level because it's you are like fully immersing yourself in that experience of of the design process, the build and the design simultaneously. Mox are fun. If you're not building any Mox, just give it a try. Haminations, Haminations says, Boone, hello, I love you on Lego Masters, ha ha. Alexander says, yeah, later on in life, materialistic possessions are meh. It's the memories that matters most. The meh, the memories. I think it's funny that you said material possessions are meh. And then it's the memories. Because memories sound kind of meh. I'm just kidding. Only because they have literally the sound of meh memories in them. All right. Fozoom says, mocks are the way. Uh, DJ Headphones says, what idea do you like? I presume you mean like of the, of the ones that have been most recently reached a 10,000? Is that what you mean? The ones that are up for review? Um, or do you mean any Lego idea? Why isn't there? Oh my gosh. I thought my middle monitor was dead, but it just literally has zero anythings on it. Let me see if I can pull up a... Lego ideas. Here it is. If you're asking me what in general is my favorite Lego ideas project right now, I will just say that um, it's it's a uh, hop on the magic school bus. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Lego Ideas project, and let me tell you, it is crawling along. I got to 4,000 fairly quickly. It only took me a couple months to get to 4,000, but I've been sitting between 4,000 and 4,500. I'm only at 4,100. So I've been sitting in the 4,000s for a long time now. It's been a few months, but, you know, that's okay. So there you go. That's my favorite idea. Go vote for it. If you're talking about the ones that just hit 10,000, um, I haven't really looked at them. I'm sorry to say. I, I was aware that all that was coming through. On whatever day it was that all that came through, I was really busy lining up um, a new commission gig that I got. And I'm really excited about this commission gig. And um, I'll tell you all about that like in July or something. Um... But uh, but I was so focused on this other thing that I really kind of missed all the news on the on the uh, what call it the idea projects. I mean, I was aware obviously that like there's way more there's way more than there's ever been, and um, I was really hesitating last year when there was like twenty some odd in the one review, and then there was thirty something in the next review. I was really hesitating to like complain about it because i'm like it's covid it's like lego's gotten so much more popular because so many people are stuck at home so many more people are submitting ideas so many more ideas are getting to ten thousand. um that i was just like i was very very slow to want to um explain it away or like try to try to name solutions 
But when, when there were 57, I am now on board with everyone who is like, something has to change. I believe I would agree with that statement. I have my opinions about what to change to uh, improve that process. But I'll save that for another time. Journalist Scott says, rock the vote. Brickham's Den said there are a lot of great ideas on the platform. The Magic School Bus is so great, especially the mods. Rooting for you, Ben. Thank you so much, Brickham's Den. Hey, Rick Brickham, uh, Brickham's Den also has a great Lego Ideas project up right now. It is the Mayan Masks. So if that sounds interesting to you, head on over there and look for that and support support our uh, Boon Builds cohort here, Brickham's Den. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Aubrey said, it's just waiting to hit 10,000 for the right review period. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Andrew Levine says, is there going to be a Lego Master Season 2? Yeah, it's already been announced. It's coming. Um, it's like two weeks away. Um, June 1st. Holy smokes, is that two weeks away? Sheesh, it's just, just like just more than two weeks away. Crazy. Do you like the Harry Potter stuff? I love it. it says Haminations. Um, I do like the Harry Potter builds. I'll say um, I don't necessarily share some of uh, J.K. Rowling's views, but neither do many of the cast, nor Lego, nor it seems, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the, the studio, Universal Studios. Um, but I do like the, I love the characters, I love the story. I love the models that come out of Lego. My daughters absolutely love it. Journalist Scott says, we'll be cheering on Moto. There you go. Andrew says, y'all were my favorite on the show. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and thank you for the support. Oh, this is going to be so cool, you guys. I can tell right now. Look at this. These are going to be like... I was talking about that kind of oh it's like okay hold on i'm gonna hold, i'm gonna hold off on my commentary for a moment because i don't want to make guesses about this that could be incorrect but it just it's looking cool i think this is just gonna be a really rad set and for 99 dollars, it's gonna be a great buy for a lot of people what happens there oh those are okay steven says what do you think of the Lego World Builder program? You know, I don't know. I tried to spend a day kind of looking into that. And I don't know if I really got it. I mean, I I get how it works. I, I understand, I think, what they're trying to do with that. But it's difficult for me to... I don't know. It's difficult for me to be really passionate about that because... I just like, okay, here's exactly why. Here's why I'm not crazy about getting passionate about that. Is the worlds that I build in my imagination when I'm building with Lego, meaning, you know, if I'm doing a layout that's a space layout and I name, you know, I, I name the faction, I name the sub theme and I give them, you know, a purpose and reason and I give them names, all that stuff is just, that's just for me and it's just for fun. And if I want to share that with an audience, that can be fun too. But um, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't feel like something that I have the need to like get a bunch of people to support. Like, so I don't know. I, I feel like it has the risk of becoming like ideas, just like super duper saturated with like every single person thinking their idea is an awesome idea, which every person's idea is an awesome idea, but not every idea needs to be an idea that is appreciated by everyone out there. You know what I mean? I mean, not even, not even Lego themes do that. So I don't know. I'm torn on it. I'm torn unless I misunderstand what you're talking about, but I think that's the thing where it's like Lego ideas, but you just kind of, you sort of, tell a story and you build this universe instead of so it's more like it's more like story driven than like an actual model if that makes sense um i guess it could be really cool 
especially if you were into that. And I am into that, but I don't feel like I have the need to share it in a way that I'm going to like try to get votes and support. Uh, I feel like I can do that with y'all here. Like if I come up with an idea, like my city, I just, I, today I literally thought of the name of my city and I hope that I get to share that with you all here um, sometime in the near future. And I've got ideas about like who the people are that are going to live there and, um, and all that. But, but I think it's okay for that to be personal, you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean that like every idea needs to be an idea that like we try to push out there to the entire world. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's fine. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it, it doesn't make a hundred percent sense to me. Okay. Oh, cool. Look at that. So now we've got like a little barrel in there with the baguette. We've got some little fruit in a basket. Nice. Yeah. So Jake says, uh, just, uh, like coming up with a whole theme instead of a, just a one-off build. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I definitely like doing that. I like doing that myself. I just don't necessarily need another thing to like try to promote, you know, I can just do it for fun here and I can share those ideas with you and I can show those things at conventions when I have the opportunity. Fazoom says Boonsburg, Boon, Boontown, Las Boongas. No. Betabrick says, do you prefer to build models or for display or mocks with lots of functions for play? Oh, so like when I'm doing them, I've done both. For a long time, my mocks really didn't have much function um, because that really wasn't the purpose. Like I built mocks just to look cool, I guess. And um, it's like a jail. This must become a jail because there's like bones in here. Yep. Yep. There's a jail door. It's about to become a jail. Um, but uh, I've recently begun thinking a bit more about functionality when I build my mocks. I have always kind of appreciated building mocks that like have some sort of like mechanical movement or something like that so that if I put them on display at a convention, there's something cool for people to look at with lights or, or movement. Um, but as far as like play features, like cool things to like hold in your hand and do, I've only just recently started doing that. Alex said, yeah, if you're not careful, you spread your butter on toast too thin and lose the overall effect with Lego in general. What? You'll spread your butter on toast too thin and lose the overall effect with Lego in general. Do you just mean with like... Oh, hold on. Okay. Matt Clark, every time I watch one of your boon builds with my boys, they always ask to buy those sets for us to build. Uh... Got to make the kids happy and more Lego to my collection. Build on Boone. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Matt. Great to great to hear from you. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Stride Vlog says, Hey there, how are you keeping how are you keeping today, Boone? Good. Is that what you mean? I'm good. I got a fifteen dollar uh sidebox smoker today at a yard sale, so I'm excited to take my hand at uh trying some smoked meats this summer. Talking about how putting too much on your plate and not being able to do it all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's it, you know? Yep. Spread the butter too thin. I get what you're saying. I think I just bumped my keys in my pocket and locked my car outside. I heard it honk. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're making some moves here. What time is it? 4.03. Oof. I got to move along. You all are awesome. I'm going to do the best I can to engage you in the chat. But I also need to, like, lay some bricks fast here. Fazoom says, mmm, smoke meats. Daniel Stride says, I have been watching you on LEGO Masters in the UK and I love it. Oh, Daniel Stride, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. We had so much fun on that show. It was, man, what a wild ride. That was something else. It's going to look cool. This is going to look cool. So yeah, thank you, Daniel. I hope you are enjoying it over there. And I'm really glad you all get to see it. I, we, you know, we didn't know where they would end up showing it. Uh, Jean Barc says, I had an idea to ask Lego a third medieval set with us posting medieval little mock with hashtag, hashtag little third castle set. Okay. 
Cool. Sounds good. Bum, 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 bum. But I don't know. I don't know who would make decisions about that. If you went in the stream earlier, um, I'm gonna be streaming tomorrow. We're actually gonna do a a stream chain, stream stream train here on YouTube, and it's gonna be start with Mel on Iceberg Bricks. At uh, that's gonna be uh, 5 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. our time here. Then at six, uh, I'm sorry, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. here. At 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time. I will go live right here, and um, I think Mel will be with me. I'm pretty sure Corey and Travis will be with me, and we're going to be raising money for the uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society on behalf of of uh, Travis. So Travis and Corey are raising money, and then after we're done on my channel, we'll pop over to Tricky Bricks, and Flynn and Richard will do a stream. And then, let's see, then uh, it'll end with Corey and Travis on their stream. And I, I think I'm going to be around for all of it. I'm going to pop onto Mel's stream, and then I'm going to be over here for my stream. I, I'm hoping that those guys will be around for all of it, too. I don't know how exactly how that's going to work, but, um, but it's going to be fun. So come on out tomorrow. And I'm going to ask the people not give me any super chats tomorrow, because... We're just going to be raising money for the charity, and uh, we're going to direct people to the charity fund, uh, the charity fundraiser site. So, um, so if you're thinking about giving me super chats tomorrow, <laughs> do it today, because <laughs> I'm going to be telling everyone. I'm going to discourage anyone from doing super chats tomorrow and say, "Hey, instead of giving that money to me, or instead of giving part of that money to YouTube." Just go donate it all through the Leukemia and Lymphoma site. But that's tomorrow. We'll give you the details so that you can help. Because it also helps um, it helps Travis with his campaign for uh, LLS Man of the Year. All right. MC Animations says, keep up, keep up the work. I'm doing it. Blue Bandit says, Boone, will you make any more? Boone, will you... Will you make any more stop motions? Um, I would love to. I would love to make more stop motions. They take so long. Okay, look at this. This is cool. So I just put this like wall in here. So that's the jail. And if you look in there, you can see that skeleton. So the skeleton is inside the jail. So apparently he was in there so long that he died in there. That must be a really common thing <laughs> in the olden times for people to be in jail so long. Cause I, I feel like that happens in pirate stuff. I feel like it happens in medieval stuff. But there's this secret door on the side to bust out of jail. So that's a cool play feature there. And it's if this is a super simple thing. The wall has cheese slopes at the top. And there's just two studs down there on that 1x4. And it just like pops in like this. Boop, and there it goes. And it stops right there because this corner brick keeps it from going any further. That is such a simple way to execute that, and it looks great. That's cool. I like it. Little extra play features. Little play features. All right. Brandon Rice is here. Says, hi, everybody. Steven says, stop motion is fun. It'll, I'll be releasing one on Saturday. Ooh, sweet. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I wish I could do it all the time. Um, unfortunately, I just, whew, man, they take a long time. What's, what's that music? Do y'all hear that music? Alexa, stop playing. <laughs> that was weird. I must have said something. Must have said something that made Alexa think I wanted to talk to her. <laughs> that was funny. All right. Brandon says, hey, what is the most money spent on Lego? 
What is the most money I've ever spent on Lego? Hmm. Hmm. I don't I don't know. What's the most money I've spent on Lego? I don't know the answer to that. That's hard to say. May, probably I bet at some point in time uh, there was probably something I spent five hundred dollars on. That's a very rare occurrence. The most I would typically ever spend, like going to the Lego store, would be, um, like a hundred or a hundred and fifty if there was something that I really needed, really felt like I wanted for the channel. How did I do this again? I'm missing a piece and I'm sure it's not actually missing. It's probably... I have a feeling I know... Well, no, it's not that. It's not that. I'm missing another piece, y'all. I'm going to scrub back through here to see what happened because I've got a piece that I think I probably don't need. So I'm going to see if I accidentally put the wrong piece in somewhere. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. So there's that. That's right. Um, I'm almost done with this. There's... Okay. What is going on? Maybe I really do have a wrong piece here. Let's see, before I did that... Okay, sorry everybody. I don't see it, but I see a spot that I can like take another piece out and put it in so that I don't have to go find another piece. It's kind of strange. Like I had an extra piece, they gave me an extra one of those and, and not enough of something else. But uh, I just found a suitable swap that is will not be noticeable when you're just looking at the set. So I can move on. That's a cool song. Brandon Rice says, I hate when that happens. Uh, Paris Bai, B-U-Y, says, hey man, is that, is that Paris? Um, is that your last name? Thanks for watching. Andrew Garcia says, yo, that hasn't released yet. This, this is not, uh, the, the thing I'm building has not released yet. It's from the uh, AFOL engagement, AFOL engagement team. They sent it on over so that I could show it to you. Um, no, Paris. Okay, so you are Paris, but you're using a different name on last on 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 YouTube. Okay, cool. Thanks for jumping into the stream. Something's wrong here. Oh, oh, it's the, the well. Okay, I build the well, and it's sort of a freestanding little well piece. And then I'll be done with this bag. And then we're on to the last bag, folks. And I'll have 45 minutes to build whatever's in the last bag. I'm going to build whatever's in the last baggin. <laughs> Get it? Do you know what's in the last baggin? It's a dragon. See, I made a rhyme. Aubrey says, the Paris. I think it is. I think it's the Paris. Um, I'm sure he'll say, like, yeah, woo. Uh, Brickworm says, hey, Paris, you met my brother and sister this year. 
Brickham's Den says, Boone builds. How's Franklin Von Archer doing? Oh, Franklin Von Archer is doing great. Uh, hey, Franklin Von Archer, how are you doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Oh, or, or, or with Von, should it be more of like a German accent? Uh, I don't know how to do that. He's doing great. Uh, we need names for the other two characters. So we've got this person here. This has more of like a feminine face on it. Uh, by Lego standards, this has another guy in a goatee, and he's wearing the uh, he's wearing the thing here. So, in the live chat, go ahead and give me some ideas for other names for these characters. And this is like a little tiny well. Well, 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 and we get to put on an itty bitty frog. Robert, Robert. There we go. Done with that. We got some names. Brandon Rice says, what is your favorite Lego game? Oh, I don't know. My favorite Lego game is uh, Trivia on Boone Builds Livestream. It hasn't started yet. But it's coming. I can't wait. Oh my gosh, you guys. I, I did it with my... Um, I did Trivia Day last week, I think, with some folks in uh, over on Patreon. Some of my supporters on Patreon, we did trivia. It is so cool. I found this platform that allows you to do trivia on a YouTube video and you, the viewers, get to um, put in your answers in the live chat and it keeps track of everything and like shows you who the winner is. It keeps track of the people who give the right answer. It keeps track of people who answer the fastest and it... Um, it, it gives priority to the people who answer the fastest with the correct answer. It's awesome. And uh, I think we'll probably do it. Oh, we might do some this Saturday. Holy smokes, is that tomorrow? I need to write some trivia questions. Um, we, we'll probably do it tomorrow when I go live here. And we're definitely going to do it next Thursday night when I go live for my new weekly live show. We will have some trivia. It's going to be awesome. And it's so cool. You remember when I was doing giveaways for my 30,000 subscriber, 30,000 second live stream? And um, I just would like go and like press a button and you'd all opt in in the, the live chat. And then I'd go press a button and it's just like that. It's not fun. It's like not a fun way to like pick a winner. Like it's cool. It's cool that it works. It's cool that everyone in the live chat can opt in. But that just wasn't that fun. So I was looking for like more fun ways to um, engage the live chat. And we got trivia. It's going to be so rad. Brickworm says, names, Boone, Mark. Oh, Moon, Bark. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Names for these other characters. Moon and Bark. I like that. I can get on board with that. YouTube trivia sounds cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. Um, Brandon Rice says, Varkin. Is that one of the <laughs> one of the people? Uh, FF Studio says, heard of you thanks to Lego Masters Season 1. Fun to catch you live. Awesome. Thank you very much, FF Studio. Um, thanks for watching Lego Masters Season 1. And thanks for watching the live stream here on Boone Builds. Wedge and Biggs. Yeah, all right. So we've got um, Harold. What, what is Brickham? What was the name of the something Wolfie Von Sharpstein I don't remember his name <laughs> Nicoletta is here hello do not apologize for being late thank you for coming at all you're awesome <laughs> Varkin that's a funny name YouTube trivia Brickmasters what happened to your friend Brickmasters what happened to your friend oh Mark he just uh, he's around here sometimes we just we don't live like super close we live about 45 minutes away from each other and um you know he he has like a day job so this is not very often that we can like get on the stream together which i miss i feel like i don't know i feel like i hope there's a future where he can just like come on out here more often and we can do live stream stuff together but yeah stirgavon blade smasher i like that one 
Stilga. Stilga von Bladeschmasher. <laughs> I loved you, Star. I loved you, Star. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This castle is almost done. It's getting very close. Here's going to be another one of those awesome windows. The, like, really narrow window that they made in a really simple way, but it's, like, super effective. Sam says, what is Mark's day job? If you're allowed to say, I think so. He works HVAC. So Mark is in charge of a bunch of, what is it? So he's, he has a bunch of apprentices. Mark is a journeyman. So he, um, he tells all the apprentices what to do, but he installs, com um, residential and commercial heating and air conditioning systems. Uh, Braden Rice says, I meant, I love your Star Wars build. Thank you so much. We had so much fun with the Star Wars build. That was um, a lot of fun for us. I've done something wrong. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Easy says, it's tragic. After the loss, Mark switched over to Mega Bloks. Oh my gosh. That's funny. I should say that. No, it's not true. Mark is building some awesome stuff. If you don't follow Mark on Instagram, you should pop over there. His uh, just just look for Mark Crookshank. Uh, his handle is M E Crookshank. But if you just search like Lego Masters Mark, I think you'll find him on Instagram, and he's working on some really cool stuff right now in his studio. It's gonna be rad. Nicoletta says, "What is your most?" best what is your most best lego minifigure well um probably the lego minifigure that i have in this room that is the coolest is um cloud city boba fett man he's so rad it was it was he was the first boba fett i need to find out the details on this he may have been the first figure that had arm and leg printing like, he may have been the first figure all of Lego. I don't know if that's true or not. I gotta look that up. I certainly know he was the first Star Wars figure to have arm and leg printing. I know he was the first um, Boba Fett to have arm and leg printing. And he is not easy to come by. And I do, I do have him. Because I'm a very big Boba Fett fan. And um, other than that, I really do not collect minifigures. I kind of consider every minifigure could come or could go. Like, could stay here in this studio or could leave. Um, don't let the door hit you on your way out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, every other minifig to me is like, it's either part of a project or it's like um, fodder for giveaways or trades with friends or whatever. Um, not a big minifigure collector, but I do, I love minifigs. That Boba Fett one is really rare. Yeah, it is. It is rare. I also have the white Boba Fett, but the the I have the white Boba Fett in the poly bag, but that's not as valuable. It's not as rare as the Cloud City Boba Fett. Yeah, Cloud City Boba Fett is amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. I also designed a sweatshirt that is based on the Cloud City printing, the Cloud City Boba Fett printing. So I don't know if you see, if you're watching on maybe desktop, I don't know if it shows you Teespring, my Teespring products on mobile, but if you're watching on des desktop, you can scroll down and look at like the t-shirts. And if you don't see the Cloud City Boba Fett sweatshirt, um, I call it the Fett shirt, you can, you can click through there and find that. Find that over on that. There's also some cool Mark and Boone shirts there too. And I try to charge as little as I can for those without like losing money. Um, most of the money is just like the cost of the printing, but a little bit goes to me to help uh, to help me keep doing this stuff as often as possible. Okay, this is this is gonna look cool. So I'm putting these tiles on brackets like this, and the brackets go. 
around here. And I think the empty pieces of those brackets are probably going to get a cool something or other. Like a cool facade. I'll show it to you as soon as I get it done. Nicoletta says, White Boba Fett is found. Brick in it. I'm watching video and uh, where is found that minifigure? Oh, uh, Bricken. Brick in it found that minifigure and you saw it on a video. Looking so, so awesome. Awesome. Blue, welcome back. Hello again. Hello again, Blue. Blue. Yeah, Blue. That reminds me of two movies. It reminds me of Old School and it reminds me of Christmas Special. Uh, Christmas Story. A Christmas Story, I think is what it's called. Where he, he's got the... Um, the Red Rider, uh, what is it called? The Red Rider double action air rifle. I don't know what it's called. Jennifer Gaynor is here. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, and Brickham's then, you're my boy, Blue. <laughs> All right. I'm getting dangerously close to the end of this. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so so here, I'm going to try to tip this on its side so I can show you what happens here. And all the fruit just fell out of that little fruit stand, but it doesn't matter. So you see this yellow and the brackets. And then I take one of these. Oh, what did I just do? Sorry. I didn't mean to do that. You take one of these and you put one of these doodads on. And then that goes on there like that. And look at that. How cool is that going to look? What a cool way to make like little walls. Ba -bomp, ba -bomp. Nice. Sweet. Do you have the Silver Stormtrooper? Nope. No, I just don't collect everything. I collect very few things. And Boba Fett is one of the few things that I collect like as many things as I can. Um, I even have some non Lego Boba Fett stuff and I have gotten rid of so much of my non Lego, Bo uh, I've gotten rid of so much of my non Lego toys, but I have kept a lot of my non Lego Boba Fett stuff because he's just my favorite. I'll get that out sometime. Um, let me know, would it be interesting for those of you in the live chat here? And, uh, looks like we've got some, uh, some more people joining. People must be getting off work. People must be uh, settling into their evening and going, hey, I'm going to watch some Boone. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Um, but uh, do you think it would be interesting for me to sh like open up my box of non-Lego Boba Fett stuff? Or should I just really keep this channel Lego? Let me know. If I threw in one video that was like, Ooh, let's like take a trip down memory lane with my old Boba Fett collection. Would you like it or would you be like, nah, it's not Lego stuff. Let's not do it. Let me know what you think. Brickham's Den says 57 viewers and 57 likes. Smash that like button, peeps. Woo. Thanks, Brickham Den. Brickham's Den. Uh, Blue says, I think variety is fun. FF Studio says, yep, finished all exams for this college semester. So came to hang out. Sweet. Congratulations on getting all your exams done. Look at how good this looks. Isn't that cool? Oh, I keep dropping out the fruit. I got to not put the fruit back in until I'm done. See all this green sitting down here. It's almost dragon time. It is high time to build a dragon, folks. Sam says, I would be interested to see your Boba Fett stuff. Sweet. Yes to Star Wars collectibles. All right, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just um, get out the Boba Fett. You know what? Maybe I'll save that for like um, around the time that uh, the book of Boba Fett is coming. What do you think of that? Does that sound cool? I'll like, I'll get my Boba Fett boxes out of the attic and I'll sit here and I'll open them up and we'll just have fun with checking out some Boba Fett stuff. There's not a ton of like super old stuff. There's a lot of stuff from like the late 90s and the early 2000s in there. Um, there's a handful, there's a couple, like maybe one or two things from the seventies, maybe one or two things from the eighties. And then a lot of stuff from the nineties. 
So not not too much like super old stuff as far as Star Wars is concerned, but ha oh, ha oh, you all are in for a treat. Look at this. Uh Para says, "You be you, man. That's why we're here. Would be cool to see your bobas." Sweet, I'll do it. Yep. Look for look for that. I I shouldn't have said that out loud cuz now that I think about it, like a really fun time to do that will be like in the fall when people are really like itching for uh Book of Boba Fett. And I'll do it then. And I think that would be fun. Do, do, do. Thor says, sounds like a solid plan. Sweet. Brigham's Den said, that's very sweet of you, brother. Dreams are important. What is that? Dreams. Who said something about dreams? Dreams. My brother was talking about you today, and he said, I think mock... I think my mock will make Boone happy. I'll be on Lego Masters someday. Aww. That's awesome. We'll tell your brother I said hi and tell him I said, build on. Build on, my friend. Brandon Rice, I'm going through tackle football practices while watching YouTube? You just like listening to me and working on football? <laughs> or 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 you're you're on a break. Blue says yes, fall is a great time. Okay, cool. Sounds good. I will do it. Uh, do you ever like just assume what's going to happen on the next page and go ahead and do it? Uh, and then you turn the page and realize you've already done the thing on the next page because you just like totally made an assumption and your assumption was correct. Cause I just did that. <laughs> oh, this thing is so cool. So cool. Wait till you see it all put together. I can, I, I tell you right now, it's going to be, it's going to be super rad. Okay, so there is the tower. Isn't that cool? Whoa, I love it. That almost looks like it could be like, this almost looks like it could exist in Ninjago or even Star Wars almost. Um. Mm, uh, my N key never decides to work and my fingers don't wither. FF Studio looks sweet. Lego all around. Boone, what do you think of the new Lego Infinity Saga set leaks? I haven't really I haven't really seen much of uh, much about them. I think I saw a picture of the Infinity Gauntlet. Talked a little bit earlier this morning about leaks. I just I I don't put a whole lot of time into Oh, oh, look, this is the magic moment. I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about leaks because what are you supposed to do about it? Like, um, what are you supposed to do about it? I don't know. Like, be, be anxious about it for some time. Here we go. I am putting the side piece on right here. Now, let me see if I can show you this whole thing. Fling that around like this and can I lift it up oh it's kind of hard to lift oof you know what I'll do I'll switch one of these cameras to the camera that will show you part of the table give me just a moment put your hand up in the chat if you want to see this thing right now on a different camera because I can do it I can switch this camera right here who wants to see it put your hand up in the chat you want to see it we'll go to this one Uh, is that not running? Maybe I'll just do this. There it is. All right. So here, here it is. Why is that? Why is that one super laggy? Don't look at my face. Just look at the castle. I feel like for some reason that image this image this big main image here is like way behind but look over there the small version of me my lips are in time but this version of me my lips are behind okay anyway here is the castle oh it's so awesome can i make this go down even further no but that's fine so i just knocked my anvil off in the 
in the blacksmith's shop. So right here is what the castle looks like when it's fully kind of displayed out like this. And then I'll switch back to the other camera. We'll go to here. And it'll go all the way from here. I need even a wider view. Oh, now you can see my drink and my bin over there. It'll go from this. Let's get these pieces out of the way so it's not confusing. Go like this, and you can turn this one in like this, and it goes... I just broke it off. Apparently, it just stops. There's not really anything to, like, keep it. So it goes like that far, and then this one goes all the way around and meets it, and it'll click. Oh, my goodness, it clicks together in the back, too. Look at that. Now I probably can pick this up. Yeah, look, I can pick up the whole castle like this. This might be the coolest castle to come as an official Lego set in a long time. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, maybe there's some Ninjago stuff, but as far as like medieval castles, I'm going to go back to this just so that you can see this one more time. Not that. There it is. You can see this one more time. This is the entire castle. I'll rotate it around. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> oh, what happened to my flag? I knocked... I knocked the flag off somewhere. It must be on the floor. I'll find that flag. We'll get it put on there. Now it's dragon time. Dragon time. Yeah, I'm bored. Toy says they nailed this one. They did. They nailed it. I, I think people are going to really love this set. We'll go to uh, there. Let's see. Is that is that good? Yep. Let's build our dragon. Do you want to build a dragon? Yes, I always do. I wish I had a dragon friend. A dragon friend? A dragon friend. All right. Here we go. Oh, there's the... I just found the flag. It was sitting on my phone. I'll put it... Boop, 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 boop. There it goes. Right here. Pew. It's kind of facing the same direction as the other flags, like the wind's blowing in the same direction. Mm, I don't want to put that in front of there. We're almost in. I'm in for three. Well, better start starving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's such a classic Lego castle, and it's better than all of them. It's like, like it might be the best castle that's ever been released. Now, I haven't built all of the castles, so I guess I don't know. Do you want to fly a dragon? Journalist Scott says, hey, Kevin, what's up? Which Kevin is here? Which Kevin is here? Uh, Hyatt? I'm in for three. Okay. Where's my instructions? I can get back to this thing. How you doing, Hyatt? Glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Blue, do you want to build a dragon? Yes, of course I owe. Oh, okay, Blue, I'll try to sing it. Do you want to build a dragon? Yes, of course I always do. I want to build a dragon friend. A dragon friend? Oh, you're just writing, you're just transcribing what I already did. It transitioned from a parody of Disney's Frozen to a parody of bad lip reading um, High School Musical, which is already a parody of Disney's High School Musical. Boone, are you familiar with the movie Pete's Dragon? Yeah. Um, what's that song? Something about a candle on the water. I don't think I'm getting the tune quite right. But they like live in a lighthouse, don't they? I remember watching that when I was a kid. But I don't... I don't remember much about it. I remember what the dragon looks like. I remember there was a mom and she sang. I remember there was a kid. Um, I remember it being sort of like um, like the mom and the kid relationship was almost like in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It was kind of that situation, I think, but I, I can't quite remember. And then I remember there being kind of these like two bad guys that was almost like, um, I don't know, it was almost like the bad guy in Pee Wee Herman or the bad guys in Goonies, but just a little bit different and 
That's all I remember. Pete's Dragon. Uh, something. That candle on the... Ah, I can't quite remember that song. Some, I think it's Candle on the Water. On the water. Something like that. Sorry, I don't remember. Look at this cool piece. This is a rad piece for the end of the Dragon's Tale. The Dragon's Dragon Tales. Oh, do you remember that show? Did anyone watch that show? That was when like my nieces were, were kids. Dragon Tales. Oh, Dragon Tales. Um, I can't remember how, the, how that song went either. Or I do know Puff. Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Little Jackie Paper loved that rascal Puff and he bought him things he bought him and strings and he brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff something like that i wrote a song once that was kind of a spoof on puff the magic dragon and it was called chuck the average unif chuck the average unicorn and it and it it, I, I won't be able to remember all of it, but it went, Chuck the man, no, Chuck the average unicorn believed that he could fly or wished, wished that he could fly. He woke up early every morn and gazed into the sky. He met a little girl named Eleanor. She, he, she fed him wheat of rye. I wish I could remember the verse because he dies. Unfortunately, Chuck the average unicorn dies and he doesn't he doesn't um he 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 doesn't ever get to live his dream of be, becoming a flying unicorn. I'm going to have to search Google or something like that like my old Google Drive, my old emails and stuff and see if I can find the lyrics to the verses of Chuck the Average Unicorn. Um, but, um, you know, at the end of the last verse, Eleanor is is distraught because she's basically with her friend Chuck as, as he dies. And then there's something about Eleanor, like, crying a tear. Um, and the tear like revives the dragon and um and there she is sniffling and um and then it says something about i think i think something about like he um and then it goes like because when a dragon or not dragon when a unicorn dies oh and it's so sad because when a unicorn dies it opens up its eyes to live another life. <laughs> and then Chuck, the average unicorn, believes that he can fly. And then at the end, Eleanor hops on his back and they sail into the sky. Something like that. Um, man, I wish I, I wish I could remember all the parts of that song. Uh, King Tut says this needs to be a movie. <laughs> Candle on the Water is on YouTube. Okay, cool. I'll go find it, but not right now. I will find it sometime later. Ooh, I love how they did the eyes. Okay. So the eyes on these things are, um, you, they just put in, so this is kind of like the ears of the dragon, I think. And then you put in these two studs that are like trans transparent clear orange and then you cap that off with these angled curved slopes and it just gives oh it just gives it that oh it's so cool look at how cool that looks it's like all of a sudden he's got like this scowl and it's just perfect it's just like a perfect simple little dragon face and he's like Rah. <laughs> from the page we'll see what else we got here i'm gonna leave that zoomed in for a little bit where's chuck the average unicorn from i don't know I, I can't remember googling it but nothing comes up no i wrote that song um it's it was like an original song 
that I wrote as like kind of a parody of of um, Puff the Magic Dragon. So you're not going to find Chuck the Average Unicorn lyrics out there anywhere because I, I made them up. Um, but I think I could probably like search through my Google Drive or my old emails and maybe find, because I, I, ri- I know I wrote it down somewhere. I remember typing up the words. Yeah, Brickworm says it's a boon creation. Um, I also wrote a song called Dentist's Apprentice. And I'll, maybe I'll share that one with you guys sometime because it's, it's a cool one. Look at that. Look at this dragon mouth. This is cool looking. I like it. I need to find out who designed this set. I wonder, do you think it'll be on brick set? Let's see, brick set. Let's just jump on over there. When I'm done with the dragon, I'm going to see if I can find out who designed this set. I'm not going to look right now because we got to finish this. Got to finish. Uh, Steven says, if you could design a three-in-one creator set, what would you make? Um, I don't know. What three-in-one creator set would I make if I could design one? Let me think about that for a second, Steven. That's a good question. That's a great question. Give me some time to think about that. I want to answer that question, but I want it to be a good one. Brickman Mosaics Art says, I remember you singing Everything is Awesome on the channel Boone Sings. Those songs are actually on YouTube music. What? They are? Wow. Cool. That sounds like a rockin' good time. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of our team. Everything is awesome. When you're bound to be to be you. <laughs> Look at that leg. It's a little leg. Doot, doot, doot. And we'll stick it on the dragon. Drag on. Okay. And then we're going to get a little bit more here. Uh, Blue says, I would make an octopus, a fairy garden house, and chuck the average <laughs> unicorn. <laughs> nope well yeah you can do it but you're gonna have to get licensing through me because uh, I own Chuck the Average Unicorn no I'm just kidding you can use it you can use it but if you start making a ton of money on it please kick me a little bit as a royalty <laughs> And then this, I presume, goes on the other side. Yep. Oh, he's going to have cool feet and everything. Down. This dragon is going to be rad. Look, he already stands up. He doesn't even have his feet, and he already stands up. Make two of these. He's got a lot of claws. I'm going to call him Dragon Claws. So there's one of his feet. You ready? You ready for this? Click. Isn't that cool? And then we'll do one more foot. It's a simple little foot. It's cute. Do 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 Maybe another life. Did y'all hear that loud car? There's this Volkswagen lives right down the street. It's like super like souped up. And um, it is loud. And it if that was it, it wasn't even doing its full like loud thing. Because um, sometimes it is like, woo, woo, that's loud. And we'll put this on here. Oh, what a nice wing. And he just gets one little claw. He gets one little claw out at the end of his wing, out in the, I guess it's the middle of his wing. And it's just like, a little claw right there. Dragon claws, dragon claws, can't stand on their own. Oh, sing to the chorus of Let It Go. Dragon claws, dragon claws, can't stand on their own. Dragon claws, dragon claws, 
Boone's table is their home. <laughs> that would be a fun that would be a fun live stream um to do a thing where I should do that on Boone Sings. A live stream where it's just like people putting hilarious lyrics. Oh, I missed a piece. People putting hilarious lyrics into the into the live chat and then saying like sing this to the tune of something else. That would be a fun concept for a live stream. I could totally do it. All right, getting close here. Brayden, uh, Brandon says, hi, I'm back. Beta Brick, I can't find the set designer on Brickset. Okay, well, it, it probably just got put on Brickset because it was under embargo until today. So that means the set designer either doesn't do that or they haven't done it yet because it's like brand new. Okay, here we go. And the dragon will like totally stand. Oh, you guys, this is so cool. You can't see it from that angle, but the, the dragon will totally stand on two legs. I'm gonna switch this camera over here again and then you'll be able to see it. Move the book and look at this. Isn't that cool? He's so cool. His tail doesn't even have to touch the table for him to like stand on two legs. He's a little bit wobbly, but he stands up. Corey is here. Corey at Boom Builds. Hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great day too. Corey, check out this castle that we built. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't it awesome? Look, I forgot some parts in here. I need to do that real quick. Um, this goes here. I'm trying to look at it on the screen because it's pointing away from me. Okay, so there's that. And then this one goes here like this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there it is, everybody. The castle is done. The castle is done. Should we name it? Should we name the castle? What do you think this castle would be named? And then we got to name the dragon. All right, so uh, castle first. What are some names for this castle? It should be called Castle... Um, oh, the cool thing about this dragon, look at this. So this is the way his legs looked when he was standing. And he can like put his wings to the side like that. And then when he's flying, his legs can like go back like flying dragon legs. Um, like that. Isn't that cool? And he's like, Rawr! Rawr! What kind of what kind of noise does a dragon make? Rawr! That's like a baby dragon. <laughs> awesome cool we've done it everybody we've done it it's 453 so i'm well, let's just hang out for uh you want to hang out for seven minutes i'll leave this screen up the delay isn't as bad is it oh it's still slightly behind so if you watch watch that guy his mouth his mouth is like right on and then watch this guy and his mouth is like not quite Bop, bop. <laughs> okay, let's see some of these castle names. Castle Flannel. Ooh, I like it. Castle Dulock. Dulock is. Um, castle de Boon. Castle Snap Crackle Pop. <laughs> White Castle. Like the burger joint. Nice. Castle 453. Castle. This is. I like this one. Castle. Castle McCastleness. Can we call it Castle McCastleness? I love it. Hey, Boone, how's your day going? I saw you on Lego Masters, big fan. Thank you very much, Samuel. My day's going great. It's getting warm in here. Today was a hot day, and it's getting a little bit warm in the old studio. Um, let's see. I'm going to get rid of this one. I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I can get rid of that, or my thing's going to stop. Cool Kia says, bruh. Nice castle. Nice castle, bruh. <laughs> 
Brandon Rice, have you ever built a World War II mock? No, I haven't built a World World War II mock. Um, th that's just like not one of my top interests, so it doesn't. It's not a thing that becomes a mock that I spend my time on. Um, but there are some people out there that are building really awesome World War II mocks, so I hope you check them out. Uh, Jennifer says yes, it was hot. Castle de Boone. I think someone else said that. What are your thoughts on Lego Master Season 2? Well, I haven't seen it yet. So ask me when it's airing and I'll tell you my thoughts. We're going to wrap this up in five minutes. Gary says your Lego room is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, check this out. So we can do... Um, I'll do this. I always forget that when I'm using this camera, I can change the view a little bit. So, uh, no, I didn't want to zoom. Where's that? I want to go like this. Burp, burp. Burp. Mm. If I turn this around, the castle is going to be upside down. But it's sort of like you're looking at it. So now I can like go like this. And here's here's the castle, everybody. Here's the castle. It's really hard to move around when these things are open because they're only connected by one point. But what I wanted to show you was that this stuff over here, look at that, the mocks and sets that I have over here, I can like zoom way in and, uh, and, and, and take really close looks at, uh, at all the stuff I have on the shelves over here. So there's a bunch of Batmobiles. There's a... Uh, there's some of my Slave 1 sets up here. Probably zoom out because that's a little bit too close. It's construction Boba Fett. Anyway. All right, we'll go back to here. And um, I will close up the castle. This reminds me of Mr. Rogers when he would get out like the tiny castle that looked just like the castle in the neighborhood make believe and let's see i'm gonna pull up the pull up the drawbridge doc samson says do you have an alternate build in mind other than the two uh, other than the two the, the b and c model and uh or are you just going to savor this set for a while i actually have that's a good question doc I have an idea for another set, an alternate model for another set that will complement this set. Um, and I haven't even started, I haven't even begun starting on that yet. Here, I'm gonna stick this guy up here so he can arch somebody. And I'm gonna stick this guy up here so he can spear somebody or, or at least say, I, you cannot come in. You cannot come in, sir. And then this person will go hmm, maybe down here. I'll put this person right here. They don't have a weapon. They're going to stay close so they can hide out if they need to. And then if you didn't see this earlier, I did. Um, I put I put King Boone on the on the throne in here. So there's King Boone in there. Hehehe. <laughs> All right, Brickham's Den says, Castle Randstein with minifigs Franklin von Archer, Ursula von der Spearer, <laughs> Ursula von der Spearer, and Joffrey. Joffrey, man, that reminds me too much of uh, Game of Thrones. That dude is creepy. All right, then we'll go ahead and, and put the, I'm going to put the, what is this, dragon? Put the dragon up here. And he's like attacking the castle. He's gonna spit fire at this guy up here. And he's like, no, no. Or she. All right. Joseph Zawada says, ahoy, Boone. Oh, shoot, wrong stream. What do you mean, shoot, wrong? Oh, ahoy, ahoy, hoy. You can say ahoy, hoy here, that's fine. One minute, everybody. Which is better, this set or the medieval blacksmith? I haven't built blacksmith yet. 
uh, blacksmith is like cr uh, creator expert, right? Or did it come through ideas? Oh, blacksmith is ideas. I have a feeling that the, the blacksmith probably has a little bit more complicated build techniques. Probably some more interesting stuff. But that's it, everybody. That is the medieval castle. Switch back to this one more time so that I can sign off with y'all looking at the medieval castle with this awesome front view. It's so cool. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, uh, Brayden. Thank you, Avery. Uh, Kevin, Doc, Bricktopian, Joseph, Corey, General Trons, Avery. See you later. Blue, you all are awesome. Thank you so much. If I didn't mention your name and you were watching, thank you so much for watching. Come around tomorrow and be doing some Lego trivia right here on Boone Builds. I'm going to have some of my Lego Masters buddies hanging with me. We're going to raise some money for the Leuco uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And we're going to support our friend Travis from uh, the Brothers Who Brick in his campaign at uh, Man of the Year for the LLS. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoy.